preparing to live stream meeting. Yeah, mine says live. I'm just going to make sure it's live on YouTube first. Preparing to live stream meeting. I, I just got the notification. All right. I'm turning my, I'm turning my YouTube, um, uh, my YouTube microphone, you know, volume off, yep. so that it's not going to repeat again. So if you've got YouTube open, mute it. That up there. Good morning, Jenny Mueller. Jenny's online, Steve. Well, hello, Jenny. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Wait, we can't see you. <laughs> it's good to know you're there. Yeah, Jay Reed. Hey, have you guys been watching Jay Reed's content, by the way? He's, uh, he's a, an up-and-coming YouTuber. He puts a lot of 996 and 997 content out. It's really good. No, I need to check him out. In fact, Jay did a video that said uh, something along the lines of, before buying a 996, make sure you watch this video. But unfortunately, he published it about three months after we bought a 996. <laughs> so he's partly to blame. Yeah, I guess. Jay Reed, <laughs> all your fault. <clears throat> we've got Andrew from Brazil. Oh, we've got Dan, who's uh, based out in Iraq, or Iraq, depending on how you speak, Americans or English. <laughs> Bourbon and Cars, hello. Kevin Cotman, yes, how are you? Kevin was uh, in uh, one of the uh, auto amateur um, viewer videos with oh, his, uh, cool. 11. There's some guy called Michael Smith. Who do we know? A Michael Smith? Mm, it's been yeah. ages. If we have, yeah, is he, he that, is he that slow guy down from Rochester? Maybe. <laughs> congratulations on your new job, by the way. Yeah, Michael. congratulations, Michael. It's very good. He's the Panamera driver. That's why you wouldn't know him, Steve. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> John Sid from New York. Oh, hey, Tom Fitch. Thank you. More love from New York. That's fantastic. I still have my 917 phone number from when I lived in New York, and I am never giving it up. Oh, yeah. I, I wish I could have a 917 number. I don't give them out anymore. I think, I think that's it. They're all gone. Wow. I think so. Waterloo, Canada. RJ Payne, Waterloo, Canada. Welcome. Mr. Michael Bath is in the house, everybody. Well, hello, hello. Michael Bath, all the way from, I think he's in London at the moment. I'm not sure he's in Bahrain. You still get a gold star, Michael. <laughs> Drowned Porsche, hello. Dan. Oh, morning from uh, OJ in San Francisco. You got a 991.2 and you love what we're doing to the 996. It's very kind, considering we just blew it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Daniel. Uh, Daniel Engel from Cleveland. Daniel um, is an ex-Nordstone -Nord member. He's been uh, following for a while. All right, all right. Mark, I can't. I don't know if I can get his name right. Mark Torcaso. I believe Mark is from Cyprus. I want to say Cyprus. Oh, and why I, man? Hi from Newcastle in the UK. Car. Cool car Porsche. Hello, hello. I love that we have a global, a global yeah. audience right That's now. Right? That's oh, really, no. really cool. Blue buffaloes in the house. <laughs> the blue buffalo, Noah. Blue Hoof. buffalo. Uh, oh, Dan in Liverpool. I'll be pleased to know that it's pissing it down in Liverpool. I, you know, that does kind of make me feel a little bit happy, Dan. Michael Dunn, Texas. Hey, this is awesome. You know, one of the things I really love about the YouTube channel is just how many people I've met from around the world, and now you guys too. I had a thought it out. I had a ping from my website last night from somebody in South Africa, somebody in uh, Saudi Arabia. The Australians don't seem to like me though. I don't get many pings from Australia. What did Maybe you do to that? Thing. So let's give it another minute or so before we start jumping into the meat. But it's nice to say hello to everybody. Jimmy Khan from East Africa. Wow. Drowned Porsche representing Philadelphia. I'm doing some work in Philadelphia at the moment. Good job. Jay Reed says it's always pissing down in Liverpool. Didn't Philadelphia just get buried in snow? 
think the whole East Coast did, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, probably. We're sitting here in Minnesota with, well, not really green grass, but icy driveway. No, icy driveway. Not up here. No. So our good friend Clay Stephens has joined, and he said oh. that every time I say bollocks today, or you guys say bollocks, he's going to take a drink from his Bloody Mary. And oh. Jenny Mueller, if you're still on, I think you should do that. Oh, bollocks. Bollocks. Bollocks, bollocks, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Michael Bass says they can't understand my accent. Wow. Hey, I know what you mean, like, from Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Wow, this is this is really awesome. We've got a nice, nice mix of folks on the line. So welcome to the Auto Amateur Live chat. And uh, hello, Jason, coming in from Mallorca. I'm just going to be calling people's names out all day. It sounds awesome. Um, yeah, so we've wanted to... We wanted to do like a live chat for a while, haven't we, guys? But, yeah. you know, life has just taken over. And then we thought the car was never going to come back from the body shop because they had it you know, for the best part of, of 12 weeks. Um, but, you know, I think initially when I suggested we do this, it was with the intention of celebrating because the car was finished and we were going to be done. And, you know, unfortunately, that's not the case. We're in a situation where we've got this beautiful, gorgeous looking 996 and unfortunately it kind of blew up on us. Um, well, here's the thing. I think the car's just not done yet. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. You know, what happened? Who knows? We're none, 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 none of us are professional mechanics. We're enthusiasts and we're, you know, do it yourselfers and backyard mechanics. So mm -hmm we got to diagnose and see what happened before we there, there could have been a problem with the motor. The motor had 170,000 miles on it. Yeah. yeah. You know um, I've, we've, I've done transmissions or transaxles in the, in the Porsches before and we did it correctly. So I don't think that it was a, I mean, I'm not putting it out that we didn't make a mistake, but I just don't feel like, I feel like there was something else in the motor that we didn't know about. There I just want to say I didn't much touch wrong it. with what we had to do. I didn't do a transmission. Yes, you literally touch nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, if if we're trying to, I'm I'm not wanting to point blame at anyone. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny. But you know, I've got to say, I was really, um, I was really hesitant to post that video the other day that on Friday. Uh, whenever it was after um you know unfortunately experiencing the issue with the car um i think partly because i don't like to fail and i know you guys are like that as well um but also i, I kind of felt like we'd let loads of people down you know loads of people have been following the series um in the break that we took while the car was in the uh in the garage people were asking about it all the time and uh yeah i kind of felt like we've let a load of people down i, I let my next door neighbor down he came over last night saying, have you fixed it yet? Can we go for a drive? And I was like, sorry, mate, we did fix it and it's now broken. So, you know, but the, um, the feedback that we got from uh, the folks on the video, I, I've just been blown away. So many people have been encouraging and positive and, you know, we can even see it down here. Jay is, is shouting, keep going on the 996. So is Christopher. I mean, so many people are saying we should just keep going. Yeah. And well, here's the thing. We're only, we only fail if we quit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's, there's a practical reality that we live in, which says there's only so much more money we can put into it before, you Without know, a doubt. Yeah. we can like at one point we were going to make a bit of a profit. Now we've got to make sure that we're going to try and break even. There is a risk that we're just going to sink money into it and we're going to, you know, come at it with a loss. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm happy to keep going forward personally, as long as, um, you know, we can break even kind of, even if we, even if, we, even if we take a bath for a little bit, the experience and the fun of working with you guys and actually, you know, doing this project, you know, that that's, that's worth a bit of an investment for me. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I don't want to bankrupt myself on it at the same time. <laughs> no, no, not at all. No. <clears throat> so well, I think we're kind of at that crossroad then. And, you know, another reason for the live session today is uh, to like have an opportunity for, for the three of us to talk about what our options are. Uh, but also to get people um, throwing in ideas. And, and it, we, we're getting loads as we're talking right now. Um, keep going. You know, there, there is a question, actually. Jimmy Kahn there suggested it. Um, 
a GoFundMe campaign. A couple of people have suggested that to me offline. Um, I kind of like that idea in some degree, but I don't think we're there yet. Yeah. I think we can still keep going yeah. with what we have um, and look for, an, look for an engine, look for a transmission. But I guess that comes down to our options. And it depends on what the root cause is of the problem. Because yep. if it's a new transmission, that's one thing. Right. <laughs> Yeah. You see what Noah just said? I <laughs> Think about how much carbon fiber you could buy for the cost of a new engine. <laughs> Guys, I'm out. See ya. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, Thank you, Noah. Yeah. 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 And actually, Dan, Dan Freeney there said, ask Nick, as in Nick Murray, he'll know. Nick Murray was actually the first person I phoned the other day when I was feeling really utterly depressed and crappy. And, uh, he basically spent 15 minutes on the phone making fun of me and thinking of all the ways that he can make fun of me and us in a video of his in the future. So he was useless, absolutely useless. There was no help there whatsoever. All right, where is the unfollow button on his page? Exactly, exactly. You know what? He's out of the country for a few months. We could go and take a road trip to Connecticut and light up his house. Oh. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I guess like if we... Let's go back to it again then. So if it's a new transmission, we know we can source one. They don't cost the, the earth. If the engine needs rebuilding, then you know that's a challenge and there's probably some of it we can do. We probably need help for a lot of it. Mm -hmm. But if the well, engine itself is toast, then that's the far end of the spectrum and getting hold of a new engine will will cost a, uh, you know, a fair amount. Well, and it's the exploration right now as to why did it fail the same way twice. Mm -hmm. It's okay, so here's, here's what way. we do. Here's what we do know: the the transmission bell housing is cracked. The where it mounts to the motor housing, the motor the motor case halves are cracked. Yep. So that means that that motor has to come out of the car. We can't just. There's no fixing that motor. You need two. We need two new case halves. Right. So that <laughs> means taking that motor completely apart and rebuilding it with new case halves. Right. So instead of rebuilding that motor, which is going to be expensive, plus putting new case halves in it, you know, looking for, looking for a used motor or a motor that's been rebuilt yeah. is probably a better idea. Way more, yeah. way more financially yeah. Yeah. Um, responsible. So are you, are you suggesting, Steve, then, sorry, that our engine can't be rebuilt because of the problems with it? Or I'm, it I'm, I'm, I'm saying that that motor has to come out of the car because yeah. the case is cracked. Yeah. And the way the, the way that the flat sixes are is you have your heads and then you have your, the, the block, the block is in two halves and where the transmission mounts to that is cracked. So those halves are, are useless. So yeah. basically the case of the motor is useless. Yeah. So that's pretty much new motor time. Okay. Okay, so it's it's not like source those components time. It's it's you need a new motor. Yeah, and right. I, I do think we should get a uh, a bore scope camera and and check out the bores on that yeah. motor because I do think that um, that email that you got uh, I forget the guy's name Chris I think mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. yeah uh, was suggested that that there's probably we're probably going to see bore scoring because that's what it sounded like. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think I even just saw Chris join. He uh, said hello on on the side a second ago. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that email, Chris. That was really, really helpful. Yeah, fantastic. Because like I said, we're not, we're pretty smart guys, but we're not uh, trained technicians. So yeah. I just, I can't wait to find out really what happened and why it cracked the first tranny and now why it's cracked the second. Yeah. Was because even if the engine did have bore scoring and it was on its way out, you know, bore scoring wouldn't have caused that problem. So was the engine out of alignment? You know, we fixed the mounts. Mm -hmm. um, the IMS had been done. The RMS, it looked like it had been done. Yeah. Um, Would an IMS failure cause this? Would there be some alignment being put up if the IMS was either not done correctly or in there at an angle or just not seated correctly? I don't think so. Well, that would... It would catastrophically, catastrophically destroy the motor. So, because yeah. it runs on a chain. Yeah, it's an interference motor. So, what would ha what would happen is, is pistons and cams and valves and everything would touch. 
mm-hmm. where they're not supposed to touch. Right. So. As Chris writes again, saying, you know, no worries about the advice. Let us know if you can help. If, if you can like come to Minnesota, Chris, for a few months. <laughs> yeah, come on, come on up. Yep. Help you know, dig us out of this hole. Jay, Jay Reed also said he'll come over and help. I think, I think right. that's fun. Um, you just finished your basement, so you got extra room. Yeah. But yeah, so if the IMS failed, like the engine just wouldn't run at all. And what we experienced, or at least what I experienced in the car after you guys worked on the tranny, <laughs> was um, it, it didn't just blow up. It just it started to fail, and it failed over a period of about half an hour. The gear started to go, and and uh, you know, first went, third went, fifth went. I limped home in second and fourth. It wasn't like it just blew up. I don't know. So was think- the, when you were driving, when you were driving back and losing the gears, was the was was the were the was the gear shifter hard to you just couldn't move it into gear? Um the uh in fact thinking about it now on the way to the the the, the place where I did the drone shots, the technical college, um it was a little difficult to get it into third gear going from second to third, it was fine going from fourth to third, but going up into third was a bit of a challenge. So I was shifting from second to fourth once or twice. Okay. On the way back, um, it felt like it went into first. And as I started to um, put the, the gas down and bring up the clutch, I just didn't get any movement. The car wasn't moving and it was gonna stall. Mm-hmm. So I had to put the clutch down and like take it out, put it back in again. Um, ended up having to get it into second over rev and then take off from second. Um, but as I was driving, similar thing, trying to get into third, wouldn't go into third. So I had to put it into fourth, um, tried to put it into fifth at one point. Just, I couldn't find fifth. I mean, the gear shifter felt, it felt fine. It didn't feel excessively loose. It didn't feel like it was, it was really stiff and difficult to move. It just wouldn't find the gear. Okay. And there wasn't any crunching either. You know, sometimes if you don't quite have to clutch in properly or you don't quite hit it right, you hear that really ugly crunch. There was no crunching. It just wasn't finding the gears. Now, when we picked up the car from um, the body shop, you remember I said to you, Pat, as I drove it, oh, here we go. Chris asked, did the clutch pedal feel any different? Uh, I don't think so. The clutch pedal felt fine until the... um, until the gears stopped working. And then by the time I was sort of halfway home, it felt like the clutch was halfway to the floor and it wasn't coming all the way back up. So at that point it felt like, yeah, the clutch is essentially buggered and I'm lucky to limp along in second and fourth gear. Um, And then Pat, when you came over after I parked the car on the driveway, the clutch was basically all the way to the floor, wasn't it? Yeah, I had to reach in there and kind of pull it and flop it up. And I did that a couple of times. And after doing that two or three times, it felt like it gained pressure back. So mm-hmm. then that's when we decided, okay, well, let's let's drive it into the garage. So then I got in, put the clutch in, turned it, and then it sounded like the day we bought it. It was yeah. pumpkin and it was off immediately. And we pushed it in and that's when we got it up in the air and looked and yeah, it was split all the way around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when we tried to fire it up again to get it into the garage, we just heard that boom. Yeah. And that was it, game over. And that's when the oil started coming out. Uh, by the way, Michael Smith just said that PDK has made me soft. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Panamera made him soft. <laughs> <laughs> uh Oh, so uh, Jimmy Khan asked, why did the exhaust dance around when I made her sing? Um, that was just a simple case, I think, of not putting the bolts on tight enough on the uh, the, the driver's side uh, exhaust tip. Yeah, that, before we sent it off to paint, we never tightened them down. No. So. And that happened with my 997 as well, actually. Once I, I took the tips off, put the fister on, and put the tips back on, that left... Um, or I think it was the left-hand uh, exhaust tip. That was bothering me all the way around... Um, all the way around the tail of the dragon. Remember, Pat, I had to like pull over and just like yank it up again and make sure it was straight. Yeah, that was annoying. Um, but yeah, the car, it wasn't an immediate snap as Chris sort of asking there. Um, it was like a progressive vibration that got worse and worse and worse to the point where it just crapped out. Um, so yeah, so what I was going to say was um, 
before Michael started dissing me about the PDK. Um, when we picked it up from the body shop and I drove it onto the back of the truck, I noticed a bit of a vibration once I started to, you know, get it above, you know, sort of 2000 RPM. Um, and I figured, you know, it was just a, a, you know, a side effect of the car sitting there for a year before being driven and then sat again for another 12 months and there wasn't much gas and maybe that was the issue. Um, but I, I think, I think we've had this, this uh, thing lurking in the background the whole time waiting for it, you know, waiting for it to blow up on us. So with, with smart people watching this right now, could it have been now we changed the motor mounts after the transmission had been replaced and we had driven the car. We had run the car and driven the car a little bit before we changed the motor mounts. Could the change in play of the motor mounts put a, have put stress on the transmission to where it would crack by changing the motor mounts. Maybe. I don't know. Let's, let's, let's see if there are any smart people that can answer that question. Okay. <clears throat> and Michael gets... says something about a slave cylinder. We replaced the slave cylinder, so that was brand new to the car. Yeah, the, I think the slave cylinder is on the, the one that's on the transaxle. We changed that one. Yep. Not the one up under the dash, the I th which is I think the master cylinder. Okay. Matthew Johnson is asking, can I compare the sole performance sound to the Fister? I, I would have been able to if this car hadn't blown up on us. <laughs> they sound great in both. The nine nine six sounded pretty nice. Chris yeah. is asking, um, did we replace the pilot bearing or the flywheel? The pilot bearing was replaced. The flywheel was not. Yeah. So guys, we need to find an engine. So we did re we replaced the the pilot bearing, the throw up bearing, um, the slave cylinder, and the um, the dual mass flywheel was good. So we we reused that, and the All the, new clutch, the clutch pack was brand new also. Yep. So we reused that clutch. Um, we did put all new um, bolts in everything. So there was no used bolts going back in. Oh yeah, that's um, right. So there was nothing stretched or out of, out of yep. there. Yep, exactly. So the pressure plate went on with new bolts and we had the alignment tool and you know, you got the pins aligned before you bolted it in. Yep. I wasn't there for the bolting into the transmission or the, bolted transmission. In the transmission. And if that wasn't bolted in correctly, the other ones on the other end wouldn't have lined up correctly. So we wouldn't have, we would have had to have stopped at that point anyways. So everything was tight and, and up against the engine as it should have been. Everything else was in. So, so Chris is saying the motor mounts wouldn't cause it. Um, there's there's too much stress in the bell housing. Um, Matthew Johnson is asking when the transmission was out, did we check or replace the mounts on the front of the transmission? No, we did not replace it. Um, it's it. It didn't seem like there was excessive play in it. Um, Still looked relatively new. Yeah, yeah. It was. It it seemed like a good mount, so we reused it. So I got a question for you guys: If and when we get a new transmission and a new engine, are we going to do the work ourselves? Yeah. Oh. Steve and I've got well, lawn chairs all ready to go to watch you do it. <laughs> so to be honest with you, if we're doing a motor and a transmission, it's it's remarkably easier to put the motor and transmission together and then put them in the car yeah. um, rather yeah, than right. taking one out at a time. That's, that's really, really tricky. Um, so putting them, putting a motor and trans in the car is going to be much easier than, than putting them in separately. Yeah. Is that something, um, was the transmission flush with the engine before it was bolted on? Do we do a transmission flush? No. No, we we bought a used we bought a used transmission and put it in the car. Yeah, Chris is saying in capital letters, "Yes, do it yourself." So I guess we're gonna have to do it ourselves. <laughs> but yeah, you guys get your lawn chairs. Me and my knife and my new axe that I've bought, we're gonna be able to get this engine out, no problem. I'm not gonna sit there and watch that. Yeah, you are. You're gonna be duct taped to the chair. You're gonna love it. No, you're gonna be screaming at me because I'm not sweating in the garage Dude, i don't know how you do it i do not know how you do it 
There is you need to go to the doctor. There is something no, wrong with you. It, you know what it is? It's clean living. Wrong. Yes. Wrong. I've got a clear soul. I have no no reason to sweat. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't I just don't believe you. There's like 90 degree heat, 100 degree heat, and you're not sweating. And I'm you're passing out. out. You're literally almost passing out. Yeah, I mean, look, I know I'm a fat knacker, so that has something to do with it, but Jesus, I just I mean, all I want from you is a little bit of sweat, just like just a bead every now and again. Instead, you sat under the car being like, oh, James is sweating. <laughs> um, I was going to say, oh, question for you guys. So can we drop the engine um, with the car on my scissor lift or are we going to need a different setup? No, you should be able to. I think we just need a maybe yeah. an engine lift from the bottom. Okay. No, we so just we need to, yeah, we just need to use the 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 that little uh, transmission mount. We can drop it with that. Because we got two of them now. So yeah. You think the the engine will sit on that? You think? Oh yeah. Yep. Mm, okay. Now we need now we need an engine. I'm thinking it's just going to be easiest to steal a 996. I was out on Cole Park the other day looking at smashed ones in the front to see if there was one we could bid on. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, I'm joking, of course, but, you know, I'm from Liverpool. Car thievery <laughs> is in my, my DNA. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what I was going to ask was, a lot of people have um, been suggesting that now is the time to consider an LS swap. Well, I've heard LS swap, and um, actually, uh, Theo said do an electric swap. And while that would I think, be Tesla swap, well, I think those would why they'll be cool, but there's too many changes that need to be made. That you know, for systems and stuff, it's going to be much easier if we put in the proper motor yeah. and, and transaxle as opposed to you know, trying to do a, an LS swap. Could we do it? Yeah. Is it going to get really expensive? Yeah. It'll get, it'll get expensive because it'll there's be just be... as expensive as just replacing with a 996. Yeah. I mean, if we're even, and even if there is a, an LS swap kit that we can buy to where I don't have to go to work and machine yeah. you know, mounting plates and adapter brackets and stuff like that, then it's still going to be way more than just getting a, getting a 996 motor. Or, you know, getting a 3.4 or 3.6 and, and doing it that way. Ooh, 3.6. We could do the S upgrade. Ooh. Did I, I let like that what slip? you think, Steve Arena. <clears throat> you know, I think that's that's probably the way to go. I'm just, I've got to just take a pause here for a second, guys. Somebody called John Green has just suggested that instead of a Liverpool accent, I have more of a home county's accent, which... I've got a fix. <laughs> not, feel, not feeling pretty good right now. Wow. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the equivalent is over here, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the equivalent is. It might be like saying you guys sound like somebody from Wisconsin, but I know Pat, you're from Wisconsin, so I can't say that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty big. That's a pretty big rip. I mean, that, that's a slap in the face. <laughs> Pat, like, when you say Pat, you're from Wisconsin. Pat dies a little bit on the inside. Hey. You know what? Part of this project, I'm going to start teaching you both how to say scouse. Scouse? Or at least teach, scouse. you know, I don't, I don't understand what a scouser is. There are people from Merseyside, around the River Mersey, Liverpool. You just, you just said syllables. I don't know what you said. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> people are saying that they're going to unsubscribe if we do an LS swap. So... No, I, I want a flat six engine in that car. I think that's the, you know, yeah. obviously that's the way to go. I would be interested in an electric 996 because that would probably be YouTube gold. <laughs> you know, that would um, make me Oprah rich. And, you know, that would be awesome. But where would you get an electric engine from to go in a Porsche? Would you have to buy a hundred well, grand Tesla and chop it up? It would take so much. You'd have to put, we'd be putting either at least two engines in it we'd have to figure out the battery bank situation. No. Um, so either two or four engines, you know, or motors, not engines, they're motors. You'd put one on each wheel or put one for the front set of wheels and one for the back set of wheels. Mm. And 
there's so, way too so, much, to me. so much engineering that would need to be done to figure out how and when. I mean, we'd probably have to pull in Ben Mueller because he knows do that. a little Good bit about that type of stuff. So, I mean, I don't know. The motor mounts alone would be a pain for everything. I think Jenny would be a laugh on the project. I think Ben would just really bum us out. Jenny would fill the car with pickle juice <laughs> in the windshield wiper fluid. I <laughs> uh, love it. Yes, Christopher James, we did give Palace a toasting yesterday. Uh, you guys aren't going to get this, but the do do don't do. Did you understand what I just said? They so, do do they do do don't do. They do. Yeah, they do. Never mind. Wow, it's Scouse. Um, yeah, no, I, I, like a three four or a three six engine. That's the way to go. The question is, where do we go and get one? Like, do we yeah. go to bring a trailer and buy a smashed up nine nine six and take it out? Do we go to someone like Sarah LA Dismantler who will you know warranty the engine that she gives us for a couple of years? I think the the extra price that's going to be paid for a warrantied engine does buy peace of mind and that um, I feel like the motor and the motor and transaxle would match the level of detail that we've done to the rest of the car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. The body is flawless. Yep. The wheels are phenomenal. Everything about that car is outstanding Except the engine and trans, trans yeah, except, except the most important part. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Critical uh, system. So that's that's kind of where you know that's kind of my thoughts on it is, you know, it's kind of doubling down a little bit, but uh, you know, yeah, I think you you end up with a better product at the end of the day. So somebody called cars and guitars, a good way to live your life. Says BC from BC Moto would have good insights. If uh, cars and guitars can maybe elaborate on that, I've not heard of BC Moto. Oh, B BC Moto, he's uh, yeah, he did a ridiculous uh, boxster, he did a twin turbo setup in a boxster that is absolutely insane. Wow, yeah, yeah, I think uh -huh. Matt, Farah, Matt Farah did a did a um, you BC Moto, if you look up BC Moto on on YouTube, he's got a lot of good stuff. Okay. Now let's just give a few more shout outs. Uh, Sam Ryan from our Porsches and Pancakes group. Also Sam the Weatherman from TV. Sure. He last year had an issue with his 996, which basically yeah. blew up on him as well. Yep. And that was potentially offered up to us as a project car. And we, we, we turned it down because it was too complicated. Now I'm kind of wishing we had <laughs> <you'd> gone <laughs> from the beginning. But Sam, thanks for joining. Um, Noah, 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 Noah. chiming in. Matt Moore has asked, do we know the actual cause of the engine failure? No, not yet, unfortunately. Not yet. Something we're still going to try and figure out. I think we're pretty sure at this point that we have bore scoring. Um, but, you know, was it out of place? Was it misaligned? Did I just, you know, crash it and tell you guys a whole bunch of lies? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I got a question to pose. So if we take this apart and find... Now, the way I'm thinking is... The transmission would not break internally anything in the engine, but the engine breaking internally could have broken the transmission. Mm -hmm. So if that's true, if we take the motor apart and find that broken stuff in the motor, that's probably what caused the problem with the transmission. I'm hoping. Something unforeseen to us that we couldn't see unless we were internal to it. You just blew my mind with that, Steve. That sounded like some kind of evil Sunday morning riddle. Well, it was like three sentences in a row, so I can understand <laughs> that. <laughs> but yeah, what is there something going wrong with the engine which cracked the first transmission and then now cracked the second transmission? Yeah, for like for our diagnostics purposes, um, you know, if we find broken stuff in the motor, is that an indication that the motor was the cause of the failure for the transmission? Yeah. Or, you know, I don't think... A, tr a transmission failing would break stuff in the motor. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the path I'm going down. Okay. Can we 
take the transmission off and just run the engine and see if we hear anything, see anything? No, no, yeah. no. We don't want to turn the key on that car with that motor and motor or transaxle in that car. Well, yeah. no, take the transaxle. Oh. <clears throat> the 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 crank, the case on that motor is cracked. So regardless oh. of, I mean, that's that's a big no no. Okay. It's cracked I, right around. Play with our tools after that question. It's cracked right around where that IMS is. So if there wasn't a problem, there would be after. So yeah. Well, I think, so transmission-wise, we're looking at, um, well, let's talk money. Pat, are you okay talking money for a second? Steve? Sure. I know it's a dirty conversation. It's an ugly conversation. What is it, money, politics, and prostitutes? Don't talk about with your family? I don't know. Money, <laughs> politics, or something. I'm Would not you... related to anybody here, so let's <laughs> talk. <laughs> so a lot of people have been asking about the cost of the car and how much money we put into it. Um, so we bought the car originally for five grand and, uh, that was from, um, I think the fifth owner of the car down in Louisiana. Um, we run the, um, we did the, you know, the car fax on it. Um, it did have a minor ding on the right, the rear right-hand side of the car, but that was at 20,000 miles. And, uh, it wasn't until hundred and 68,000 miles that the uh, the transmission um, cracked. So are those two things related? Maybe, not sure. Um, but we, we spent five, five grand on the car. Since then, we've put about six grand, maybe seven grand into it on top of that five, right? Which has been the wheels, the paint job. Um, we, we got a lot of sponsorship. So we've had, you know, like the Fisters were donated to us from FD Motorsports. Yep. Um, Addos gave us a really nice discount on the paint job yeah. and so on and so forth. So we've had a lot of value from, from our partners and our sponsors too. Um, so, you know, we're at the point where we're about 12 in and we had people lining up wanting to pay or willing to pay around mid twenties for the car. So potentially there would have been a nice little profit margin there to divide up between us. Um, but you know, we are where we are now. So option one is to sell the car as a roller, which I think someone actually just uh, suggested. Yeah. And chances are we get all of our money back. So we break even. But if we keep going, we need to fund at least the engine and a new transmission and then see what we could sell it for. So let's say, for the sake of argument, we put a, an engine and transmission in which have a lot less than 170,000 miles on, and we bring the car up to scratch. Chances are we could still probably sell it for mid twenties. And who knows in a year's time, the way 996 prices are going, we might actually be able to get more than that. I don't know. But I think the point is if we're sort of 12 into it already, we know that we can get a transmission for about 1400 ish. Um, so then the question is how much do we get on the engine and how much do we how much more do we spend on top of that? So, you know, looking on eBay, we're looking at a minimum of sort of six, seven, eight thousand dollars for a, for an engine which won't be certified or warranted. If we go to someone like um, LA Dismantlers, we're probably looking more like at 12, maybe eleven. Um, which takes, I mean, even that, that takes us up to 24, 25, um, which would be the break-even point. So, you know, it's, it's, do we, do we break even now and call it a day or do we get this thing working and looking gorgeous and give it a second life and break even later? I, I'm kind of leaning towards the, the right. I'd, I'd like to see it done. I'd like to see it done. I, I want Patrick to pay for the rest of it. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> Pat. You know, that's, I didn't, the, the, the feed scratched out there. What did you say? You were paying for the rest of it? <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, so that, I mean, that's basically the crux of it, isn't it? It's like, do we break even now or do we keep going, have some more fun and break even later? I think breaking even now leaves us with a bad taste in our mouth. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I still wake up and go into that garage and see that car and I'm gutted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You got that constant reminder. I got at least away from it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a mile and a half away. Yeah. Yeah, and I forgot what the car looks like. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think, 
Um, and Christopher here, I think, has said the uh, the right thing is that before we do anything, we've got to figure out the root cause. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. if like if it, if it wasn't a problem with the engine, but it was a problem with the chassis, we put a new engine in it and a new tranny, we're back to square one again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm 90% positive there's nothing wrong with the chassis, but let's get that figured out. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Pat, looks like someone just shot one of your seven dogs. <laughs> I don't have seven, just two. <laughs> Well, after, this, after this project, you're gonna have to buy a few more. Is uh that's is, how it works too? Is Corey <laughs> there with you right now? See, Ruthie's out of the house, she's not here in any of this. Uh, they're they're in the other room and the door is shut to the office. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> oh. oh man. Well no, I, I I I'm just looking at what we've done to this point and knowing what we have to redo and the amount of time we put into that part of it and just having to redo our work. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is what it is, but. So, and, and the other thing is, you know, you got, you got motor, you got motor and, and transaxle cost. And then, you know, we got to throw another grand at it for a clutch and a um, clutch and a flywheel. Cause you know, this time we're going to replace that stuff. Right. You know, and that's where you start to dig into it and you go, okay, well, while you're in there, you might as well replace these hoses. And while you're in there, you might as well replace these lines. And Oh, geez, this thing is cracked because it's old Porsche plastic. We, we've got the engine out. You might as well do the, the coolant tank and, and all that stuff. So it just snowballs on top of one another, the costs. Well, I think if we're looking for the masses to, to give us advice, there are a lot of people out there, like, you know, rallying for us. And I think the general consensus seems to be that it is an engine failure. It's not chassis. Yeah. Um, that's, I think, what I, you know, that's what I think it is. Yeah. It's and not about money. It's about pride. How could I live <laughs> with myself if we sell? <laughs> <laughs> Says the 996 guy. <laughs> Yeah. I think a lot of it comes down to what are we going to get a cost for the engine? What are we going to get a cost for the transmission? What do those add up to? And what does that leave us left afterwards for still out of pocket costs? Yeah. 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 I mean, if I you're at think... the end of the day, you're looking at $18,000. Well, it doesn't make sense. The car isn't worth that at that point. So, I mean, one, one, one task for us to do is to, is to start scouring the web for you know, places to get a new engine, what, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and all the parts. Um, but I think, you know, we're all agreed that um, the most important thing is making sure we are clear on the root cause, mm -hmm. whether we get um, one of the Porsche techs from Porsche from Minneapolis out to the garage or we try and manhandle it onto a trailer <laughs> <laughs> um, and get it out there for them to take a proper look at it. I think that's probably what we should do. Yeah. yeah, and handle it on the trailer. You realize I'm a foot shorter than both of you guys, so <laughs> you guys are going to be doing the pushing. <laughs> hey, we got it in the garage, laying on the side of the hill, or on the side of your driveway. That was impressive, I thought. Yeah. It, it's interesting seeing some of the comments. So Blackstar1138, um, who's also reached out to me on Instagram a couple of times, has suggested that we, we, we ditch and move to another car because it's going to turn into a money pit. Um, Nate Mallory there, Nate, who uh, I believe drives a really gorgeous looking white Cayman. Uh, Nate suggests we've gone too far to go back. <laughs> it's really, really interesting feedback, everybody thinking. Well, that's, no, that's, you've never gone too far to, to go back. Right, you can always just stop and accept and accept your loss. Yeah, that's 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 a that's a that's an option. So, have we reached that point? And I, just by the talk we're having, I don't know if I don't know if we have. Pat, I don't have to give Pat, up. I think Pat has, but <laughs> I've already found a buyer for it. What yeah. for, for? Like as a roller? No, as a finished car. That's right, Pat. Look how look. How Irish are you, Pat? Come on. I see. I'm Scouse. 
<laughs> I've got the best and worst parts of English and Irish in me, and probably even a bit of Welsh, which basically means that I like a bit. I like a beer. I'm not not bothered about swearing, and I'm stubborn as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't want to give up. <laughs> oh, your airbag knows that, also. Yeah, is right, lad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm fifty-fifty on it at, at this point. I, I want to see what the the root cause was, and then I want to see what our cost will be to get it back whole again, and yeah. then kind of do an adjustment and go from there all right well i think so we'll do a root cause and we'll figure out where we go from there that sounds in like the meantime idea. i'm gonna ply pat with starbucks and keep him happy <laughs> when does uber eats deliver my starbucks today dude if we wrap this up in the next few minutes i'll be right over <laughs> i need to find someone that knows how to put one of these in the car is that a Joy Auto device? That is a Joy Auto device. Is that a Joy Auto purchased from AutoAmateur.com? This is a Joy shop. Auto purchased from Auto Amateur Shop. But now I need someone to help me put it in. I, well, look, I, I've got knives ready. Everybody write today's date down. I am asking James for help technically with an install on something. Matt, you must be hungover from last it night. Is, well, it's 2020. That's all I can say. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Wait until 2021 to put that in, and <laughs> that's a that's a valid point. <laughs> hey, well, actually, while we're talking about auto amateur, um, for anybody who wants a new sticker and has been listening today, send me an email. Contact at autoamateur.com, and I will happily send you a couple of stickers that have been designed by Mr. Pat Douglas here from Sharkskin. Sharkskin Designs? Sharkskin Works? Sharkskin Designs. Sharkskin Designs. And now I can't open it. Here we go. This is my new team decal. It's the Grey Goose Porsches and Pancake. I love Anybody it. want these? You can have them. And also, wait for it, guys. This is really exciting. Me. Auto amateur stickers. I will happily send these to anybody for free if you send me an email. And wait. The new and improved auto amateur window sticker, which is die cut its circle. It's uh, It's got the white auto amateur lettering on it instead of being transparent. And it's smaller. It's cooler and smaller. I will also send these to people for free if you send me an email at contact at autoamateur.com. Stephen Pat, you get to pay me $5 if you want one. I thought it came with my coffee. Yeah, I'll give you the coffee, but you're paying $5 oh. for a stick. <laughs> I don't want the coffee. <laughs> <sighs> so, all right, we need to find a Porsche tech or we need to get it to Porsche. We'll, uh, we'll get it, we'll get it scoped. We'll look at the bores. We'll try and find root cause. If I, you guys have leads on a 3.4 liter, 3.6 liter with not 200,000 miles on it, send uh, send James uh, an email. Yeah. Or send an email to steve at steve.com. Yeah. Steve that's, not my, that's not my name. That's not my name. <laughs> You're the celebrity here, buddy. Yeah. Any Anybody out there that has a lead on a, on a 996 engine, let us know. Um, i got a question for you. Can you put a 997 engine in a 996? Yeah, there's some changes that you need. There's a few different changes of where like power steering hoses and stuff mounts to. So okay. the computer be changed too? The computer would need to be um, changed depending on the model year, the DME. You guys are no fun. But we can put a 996S engine in there. Yes. Yes. Interesting interesting all right well let's look for one of those as well all right guys this has been fun i think we got a way forward we're going to get it diagnosed root cause that sounds like a good excuse for a video if nothing else mm -hmm. oh absolutely yep and then we'll be replacing our 3.4 liter manual 
996 piece of shit with another one that hopefully isn't a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for watching. Um, let's do a couple more shout outs. Nicholas Trowler, friend from the Wirral in the UK. Thanks for joining, Nicholas. I'm Org. I'm Org. I believe is Drew. Thank you for coming on. Clay Steffens, I hope you are drunk because. Um, bollocks. Bollocks. We said bollocks. Bollocks, bollocks, bollocks. That's at least a pint of uh, drink you've got a neck there, Clay. Jay Reed, thank you very much. Guys, if you want to follow some good Porsche content, go check out Jay Reed's channel. Michael Bath, of course. And uh, all good. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. We are Thanks out. So Patrick, I'll see you with coffee soon.